afternoon. Happy Wednesday. Yes, it's Wednesday. What a week it has been. How's your week been? I know I've talked to a lot of you. I've heard from a lot of you. There's been quite a buzz going around. But I'm glad you're here. I'm glad it's Wednesday. I'm glad we have today together. The Tulip collaboration is healing, comforting. I know, I'll be honest, it's scary today, but I believe it's a good thing that we all get together. So I'm glad you're here. Housekeeping, let's keep things semi-normal here. I got my coffee, we do have some water, I'm ready for you. If you're on your phone, turn it sideways. The picture will be a little bigger. If you're on your computer, you can go full screen. <clears throat> that way, you can see the flowers in all their glory. You're going to want to watch this hour clear to the end. Because at the very end, we have a special video we we're going to share with you celebrating Teacher Carolyn. Yes. Many of you know that this has been kind of a difficult time here at FDI. Um, February 28th, a Wednesday, we did the live stream right here, and Teacher Carolyn was with us. She also been teaching in the classroom that morning. Then she got ill, very seriously ill, diagnosed with cancer, and she passed away. March 14th, so really frequently, really quickly, very, very quickly. So like I said, we've got a video at the end, and today we're going to be celebrating Carolyn. I know we're talking weddings, and Carolyn was our wedding gal. That was what she did so incredibly well. So as soon as we knew this was all happening, like March 15th, um, we reached out to our friends, Floor Abundance, and let them know what had happened and said, we want flowers that Carolyn would have loved. And they outdid themselves. And one of our graduates, Shane, happened to be in Santa Barbara at this time. And so I believe he helped pick things out because he knew Carolyn. He had come to the retreat and um, worked with her. So it was nice to have friends to gather. And you can see, they picked the color palette that she loves. The complex hues, interesting flowers. A lot of you know that um, dyed and painted flowers aren't a favorite, but this particular tulip that's dyed was a favorite, and it was in the box. So many interesting blooms, things that you wouldn't expect. The kangaroo paw, but with the muted complex hue. And then, of course, we all know Carolyn. <laughs> she had to have her dancers. Remember, gotta have the dancers. Make sure you have your dancers. If you had the fortune of having her evaluate your VESPO submission in the um, basic floral design course, she probably said, oh, you need to add some dancers to get a little movement. So I'm going to try to do my best to channel Teacher Carolyn and stay focused on wedding. You see the palette, we've got the complex, but we also came over to sort of a purity of whites and greens, some hellebores, so many beautiful, beautiful flowers that um, I think you're going to have fun going through. I know one of the things people have asked, and especially in the wedding world, is what mechanics are we using today? Are we using foam? Are we using floral netting? Are we using just natural mechanics? And one of the things that Carolyn was very good about was she didn't stay set on one. Her answer to that was always, I use the mechanic that's appropriate for the situation. So she designed in floral netting. You probably see her on camera with that. And she designed in foam. 
You've seen her in, on camera with that. These two vessels were some of her favorites. You've seen her design in them, I'm sure. So that's why I picked them. And I also thought they were perfect for the wedding world. Um, centerpieces are hugely in demand, but the table settings are changing. They're not always round. So sometimes you need a round centerpiece. Sometimes you need an oval centerpiece. Sometimes it's not truly a centerpiece that would be low. There's some movement. Maybe it's going on an entry table, or maybe it's going on a buffet table, or maybe it's a guest book. Uh, weddings have gotten so much more diverse, you can't really say, oh, you're going to have da 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 da. Every client is a little more unique, so the wedding world has evolved and changed. Um, last week, yeah, it was last week, we had teacher Jerry here, and she was doing her toolkit discussion. Remember that one? Were you here with us? Hmm. Yeah. If you weren't here, you missed out. <laughs> on LDA. Be nice. <laughs> okay, you can watch it on replay. <laughs> um, but um, last week we had teacher Jerry here, and she was talking about her toolkit, how it was packed and prepared as a wedding and event for us. And I had to laugh because one of you asked, well, how do you dress for delivery? How do you make sure people know? And one of the things that Jerry and Carolyn were brilliant about was, was branding. So I had one of the shirts that they wore. So you can see the branded sweatshirt with Bella Bloom florals. And that's how they delivered. So if they were in it cold, they had these sweatshirts. If it wasn't cold, they had t-shirts. Um, but it was fully branded. So if you missed that, go back and watch the replay. Uh, maybe Susie and Kelly Domi might put that link in there. Uh, and that answers the question that you asked. How do you deliver? For me, when I'm representing the school, I always have my teacher smock on with our logo on it. So again, branding and setting that professional style. So back to who's here. Hi, I'm Leanne. I'm going to be your teacher today. In the studio with me, we've got both Ricky and Michelle. So they'll be watching on YouTube and Facebook. If you've got questions, don't hesitate to reach out. They'll be watching and monitoring and they'll verbalize them and I will try to answer them. And if I can't answer it, we'll see if we can get the Tulip Bunch to chime in and answer it. On the other side of the wall, you might hear them periodically, classes in session. Teacher Jerry is over there with the students and they're working on wedding over there too. Uh, if you've had advanced floral design, the day is the day that they're doing gardenias. So it is very fragrant over there. But I will admit, it's very fragrant in here as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, when I think about weddings now, there are some staples. Garden roses, ranunculus, hydrangea. But then it's evolving and changing. There's less foliage than ever before. You'll notice there's very little. I've got a tiny bit of eucalyptus here and then I've got Dusty Miller, but you don't see a lot of green in any of this. And I'm finding that more and more weddings are focused on the blooms and still a lot of vines. So jasmine vine is such a wonderful addition. It gives you some movement, excuse me, some movement and grace. And it has a little bit of green to it so that you could say, well, there's a touch of foliage, but that's stretching it. it I wouldn't say there's a lot of foliage there. So I thought I would start this centerpiece um, with the hydrangea, just tucked very low, and then extending out with the vines. <clears throat> so Leanne, we have a good crowd today. They are still chiming in, but so far over on Facebook, I've seen Grace Sandy, who said they just opened a Dutch Brothers in uh, parts unknown of Kentucky. 
So, so I guess I can now go to Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, Rick is with us. Rose, Sue, Scott, Ann, Jim, Lisa, Debbie, Sherry chimed in. Dylan's with us, as well as Robin. Dennis, I think, is watching us on YouTube, but listening on Facebook or commenting, maybe. We'll see. Uh, Grace, Christy, Roxy, Andrea, and Victoria are with us on YouTube. And Jennifer is a first-timer on YouTube with us today. Hi, Jennifer. I'm glad you could join us. Tulips, reach out, make her feel welcome and loved. Um, Jennifer, we do flowers every Wednesday because we do what we love. And that's what I love. I love flowers. So mm -hmm. today, we need to do something I love with flowers and focusing on the wedding side of things. Uh, so I've got my hydrangea in and now I'm bringing in the jasmine vine just to give it some softness, break it out a little bit. Then I can come back with some roses and with this, isn't that toffee beautiful? The toffee rose opens fairly quickly. These were fresh yesterday and that you can see how much they've opened out. I did not put them in the cooler. I wanted them to open. But once they're open, they hold beautifully. It's a very nice, long-lasting rose. And that complex hue, again, back to Carolyn, she loves this rose. It's her, one of her most favorites. So I thought that is definitely going into my arrangement. So as you're talking amongst yourselves and getting to know each other, Michelle said some of you had chimed in. Everybody else, go ahead, let us know where you are because that way you start getting to know each other. There's probably somebody on here that you need to meet that is a flower neighbor. Get to know them, and I must say, one of the most wonderful things that has happened in this last week is the outpouring of connection and love from each of you tulips that has reached out. I've received so many cards to pass on to Carolyn's family. They were here yesterday and I gave them the first arrivals and then more came again today. So I'll get those gathered up and ready for them. But I just want to thank you and it makes my heart sing. The way you all are connecting with each other. Continue that, because we're better together. And tulips, tulips are a great bunch, so get in there. I'm going to tuck one more here. Well, Robin over on YouTube said she just finished her first segment in the basic course online and Emma on Facebook says she's not quite ready, but she's hoping she can join us online as well. Oh, wonderful. Robin, I'm glad you got your first one done. I think I saw your Welcome to Flower School go out on Facebook and Instagram. It's always fun to see that, and I go, oh, we have a new tulip. Um, so grand. And Emma, I do hope you could join us. You'll find that the tulips are a pretty great bunch. And the support you'll get as you go through your studies is really wonderful. Really, really wonderful. So what else is going on out there in your world? I told you what's going on in mine. Kind of deep, sorry about that. Um, it's been a deep emotional time around here, so I'm not going to lie. But we also don't hide things. We like to be honest about what's going on. Uh, and so yes, we're all here, we're all flowering, and we're all really appreciating the love, so thank you so much. But now, I love to hear, what are you doing? What's happening? It's springtime, we hit the equinox. I mean, how cool is that? I saw um, teacher Anna just had a post in her Instagram story. She took a picture of the flowering Italian prune tree. It's right next door, and so, she was headed out to her car to go home and walking by she had a picture of the prune tree. It was oh, so beautiful. And I will tell you, I'm sorry you can't 
smell it yourself because you're not here. But when you walk by, the fragrance is intoxicating. And I don't remember that from previous years, but this year it is super, super fragrant. That's just amazing. Well, we do have an international audience, at least over on YouTube, their very good hint, hint Facebook, that <laughs> they're putting in where they're from. I've seen a Netherlands, I've seen Australia, I saw Ireland, uh, am I missing one? Ricky, I feel like there was, oh, oh, Indiana. Well, Indiana, that is a different this country. Is the universe. <laughs> and say UK. UK, Toronto, we've got our Canadians. Mm -hmm. A. Uh, we have Canadians again in, in class today. Yeah, Last week we, we had, had Alberta represented in class today. Yeah. So. In South Africa. There we go. Oh, I knew wow. I was missing something. How grand. So I'd be curious to know in your country, in your world, in your environment, what is the number one color palette you're seeing for 2024 weddings? I can tell you that Bella Blooms with Teacher Jerry and Teacher Carolyn, they are experiencing still a lot of that blush and white and you know what's been on trend forever, but they're seeing a lot more people wanting bright pops of color, a little bit bolder, a little happier, more vibrant, and so they're enjoying that very much. In fact, the picture that went out with the announcement on this email um, was the bright, arrangement that teacher Carolyn had done for a live stream and that was a cake garden it was all bright festive colors and it was similar to one that they had just done for a photo shoot so they're finding that more bright colors are coming in but still heavy to that blush white traditional palette okay. We're adding in getting a little bit of movement tucking what else I want to put in here. Um, I'm finding that chrysanthemums are having their day. And you've seen me work with the new blue ones, the Ocean Series. Uh, these have more of that mocha hue. Chrysanthemums are so long lasting and so dependable that they are a really wonderful wedding flower. And I'm finding that more and more people are using them where they weren't popular for a while. It was like, ooh, chrysanthemums, ooh. Kind of like carnations, ooh. And now carnations and chrysanthemums both are having a moment, which is pretty grand. And they make a nice basing, almost as an alternative to the foliage. Teacher Michelle, what's up? So Dennis had a question. You mentioned the trend with less foliage in designs. He wondered how that's going to translate to weddings. I'm seeing many bouquets that are just 100% flowers, no foliage whatsoever. Uh, and you'll notice I haven't used any foliage in this. Uh, I'm also not working in a classic round, giving it a little bit more character. Uh, and I'm finding that when you do work foliage free, you have to be careful because financially it takes more flowers to cover your mechanics. And so then you've got more expense in there and the client may or may not expect that. Um, in fact, probably may not being the keyword uh, because we are having to educate our clients constantly as to the expense and value in flowers. And we all know flowers are more expensive than ever before. I mean, even more expensive than say six months ago. It's just almost scary how the prices have changed. Now, for the professional, we don't like it, but that's okay because you keep track of what your cost is and then you plan accordingly. I know the students today working with the gardenias they're like, well, how much is that? And I, we had them guess, like, well, what do you think? What do you think? And um, I actually had to go look it up because I couldn't remember what I paid because I try to blank that out, you know? It's one of those things you don't really want to know. Um, but gardenias are running $10 a bloom. Ouch. I don't know what they cost in your part of the woods, but 
Um, right now here, today's price, wholesale, $10 a bloom. And so a client that's looking for a gardenia corsage may not have any idea of that expense that might be new to them. So I'm going to turn this. You can see my mechanics now are pretty well concealed. I've got some movement going through. But Carolyn would not approve because I have no dancers. <laughs> so we have to move forward. And the thing that's kind of funny is I personally don't like to use the term dancer. It's just not my thing. I'm like, I just, I'm going to add some light and delicate flowers. But I sometimes catch myself say dancing over the top. I'm like, oh, because it's just not my word. But it is hers, so I'm going to add some dancers in here. Now, this butterfly ranunculus, and I don't know, Ricky, can we get a close-up of this if I can get it in the right spot? Yeah. Okay, I'll try to Just move right this there. a little bit. There we go. Right there. Okay, so this is a new one to me, and it was beautiful yesterday, and it had um, several of this sort of buttercup scotch color, Okay. And then on the same bunch, more of this purple color, and then it went to almost eggplant. And we were trying to figure out, okay, what is that? And it is all on one stem. Well, I've got multiple stems here, but it's all the same um, plant from the eggplant to the butterscotch. What happens, they open in this real light beige, turn butterscotch, evolve to a lavender, and then as they age, they get eggplant. And so then the eggplant actually then died because they had aged out to that. So it's a transitional bloom that when the client gets it, is going to be one color, but by the time the flowers fade, it's going to be a different color, which is almost like a magic touch to the arrangement then. Now, the negative is if they only want the purple, and you send them beige, they're going to be not so very happy with you. Um, so you've got to explain to them that this is a unique bloom that is going to evolve and change. But how cool is that? I am just falling in love with them. So Floor Abundance, thank you. Those were one of the most spectacular finds. When I opened the box, I was like, oh, that was just the best thing ever. Okay, while I try to channel my inner Carolyn, you guys got anything to say out there? I have a question from Diane over on YouTube, and she was wondering, is that a snapdragon that you have coming out at an angle there? No. <laughs> hey, Tulips, who has to guess what it is? <laughs> it is not a snapdragon. You know, we got to have some levity today because it's been, it's been a week, so it is not a snapdragon. Let's see if one of the tulips knows. I'll pull it out and we'll put it on a close-up so that you can see. Here's a stem of it, and there I've got it is. one answer, one so far. Okay. It is beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so we got one answer. Let's see if we can get some more. Another answer of the same. Okay. Anybody else want to chime in? Got a second answer that I'm pretty confident isn't correct. <laughs> Not another Snapdragon. <laughs> Not another Snapdragon, no. So, so far I have Foxglove and Alstroemeria. It is the Foxglove Digitalis, I believe. Do you think that's correct, Digita Foxglove Digitalis? Yeah, I'm deferring to Teacher Michelle on that one because I was somewhat guessing, but I believe that that is the, the full name is Foxglove Digitalis. So it does look like a Snapdragon. So when I said no, I apologize if I made you feel shunned. It was not my intention, but um, if I didn't know Foxglove, Snapdragon would be the appropriate guess. The difference in the way you would know is the Snapdragon, you can squish it and it goes, you know, it snaps. Whereas this does not, it has more of a cup of a bellflower, which you probably could not see that on camera. So I'll give you on that one. So. 
So you can see I come up over the top, extending, letting it get wild and crazy. A little bit different for me, you know that's not my thing, but isn't it so beautiful? I must say, I would have to agree that it's exactly what it needs. And then, let's see, well I have two, <laughs> count them, <laughs> two pieces of lily grass. I'm going to go ahead and use them and then I'll probably add some more lily grass later. You'll see the pictures in the Tulip Bunch, the private Facebook group tomorrow. Uh, Ricky will get the professional photos of that and post them tomorrow so that you can see. Uh, and then we'll get them out onto YouTube, Instagram, and public Facebook after that. But you'll see it when I post it, it or when she posts it, I guess I should say, because it won't be me. But when it gets posted, there will be more lily grass because I think that will add fullness here that offsets the extension up here. Because just because you have dancers doesn't mean that you skip your elements and principles. You still have to follow all the elements and principles and pull that together. Uh, and so this helps keep that line going. The other thing you may see is that my tulips may move uh, because they have a mind of their own and they grow against gravity and toward the light. And so they're going to have a little bit of movement that may bring it up somewhat like this, but we'll see. Because I am going to put this one in the cooler tonight. While I set it aside and grab some more things, what have you got there, Michelle? So Robin over on YouTube had a question. She's a flower farmer and she has done weddings with her own flowers along with purchased flowers. But she says, I tend to charge less for my flowers since I only purchased the seeds. Am I doing that wrong? Yes. Okay, I'll expand on that. I probably should not be just a yes or no person. I probably should be a little more. But you know what? Sometimes that's all I got in me. And so, yes, you are doing that incorrectly. You're doing yourself a disservice. You deserve more than that. And it's funny because I just was typing to uh, another student who is a flower farmer and had much that same question, asked me, how should I be pricing because I have to have the land, I have to have seeds, I've got fertilizer, I've got to weed, I've got to do this, that, the other thing. And granted, my seeds, and I don't grow, so I don't know, I'm going to make this up, are 99 cents. But I have all the rest of the story. And so um, you really do want to look at the rest of your story and charge accordingly. And the, the first part that I would say could be good to be, you know, just to get a beginning so that you know where you're going, is um, look at what comparable items are being sold for and then make sure you're comparable. So if somebody else is selling it for $2 and you think, oh, I can do it for 50 cents, no, 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 no. Go ahead and go to the $2 because you are worth it. And we as artists or farmers or whatever often do shortchange ourselves. So um, please charge up a little bit because, you know, there's going to be a day down the road that you're old and feeble and tired if you're lucky and we pray you're lucky and you need to be able to pay somebody to help take care of you you know somebody to push that wheelchair cook you dinner whatever and so if you didn't make enough money in your heyday to where you could set it aside and be able to could be a problem so yeah Grace even said, I say you could charge a little more for locable and lo locable. <laughs> I made a new word, Ricky. Local, local, <laughs> no, local and sustainably farmed. That's what I'm trying to spit out. Yeah, that should be a premium. And direct from the farmer where you get to talk to the person who grew it for you. Oh, my heart be still. I knew... Um, I love to go to our farmer's market. And yes, I could literally, I mean, I live in the city, so I literally can walk across the street 
and go to the grocery store. But I prefer to walk a mile and a half <laughs> to go to the farmer's market. I can walk across the street to the grocery store and pay, again, I'm making this up because I don't do this, um, one dollar for a tomato. Or I can walk a mile and a half and pay five dollars for a tomato. Now, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but <coughs> that's kind of the fact of the matter. I prefer to go and pay that farmer that I know grew that tomato for me. And it's always so pretty, and I, I actually almost carry them. In fact, I have a little box, so I call my tomato box, and I carry that box with me to put my tomatoes in so if they don't get bruised. I don't want them in a bag. They might bump each other. Um, and then I carefully take my tomatoes home. That's what you want them to do with your flowers. So I have the toffee rose, and then this is Westminster. I believe the Westminster was from Garden Roses Direct, and then the toffee was from Floor Abundance. Uh, one of the things that Carolyn had no fear was mixing her roses. Oh, just go through, just stick them in there. You know what? Why would you not mix them? Oh my God. And then. I come along and say, are you sure you want those two? I think you should do it this way. And she just laughed at me. And um, I was like, those are going to go over there. So I'm going to go back to these because this is my comfort. This is also from Garden Roses Direct. It's um, a David Austin Garden Rose. It's called Eugenie. And it has a bit of fragrance, which is nice. So I've got those. And because I was afraid I would forget the name, I still even have the label on it that tells me it's Eugenie. Um, because I'm always afraid I'll get on camera and I'll get nervous and I'll forget what the word was. And so, yeah, whatever. There we go. <clears throat> Back to some chrysanthemums. And people say, oh my gosh, you're putting garden roses with chrysanthemums? Yes, I am. I am, I am. And Michelle. So on YouTube, Sailor had a question. She said she's got some weddings coming up this year, and she wondered what online wedding classes we offered. Hey, Sailor. Good to see you. I know you're with us on many of the lives, so I'm glad you're here again. Appreciate that. Um, we have three fabulous advanced weddings. So if you're really, you're already a florist, you're already doing things, um, I have three really fabulous wedding programs. One is the wedding flowers for the ceremony, so wedding ceremony flowers. One is bouquets to carry, and then one is flowers to wear. The bouquets to carry covers several different techniques, styles, forms, and mechanics that goes with the wedding bouquet. And then the ceremony has three complete vignettes. Uh, one is in a formal garden, one is in an urban warehouse space, and one is at a vineyard, so that it gives you a total different look for each. Uh, and then the flowers to wear goes into the next level. And we do it in basic, we do it in advanced, but there's always so much more. Um, and so it's got uh, a lot of the millinery side of things, the wearables, um, so all the things that you're seeing kind of on trend, you go, how do they do that? Um, and we say, this is how you do it. So definitely I would suggest that. A little bit of snowberry. I'm gonna tag just a tiny bit of foliage, but it's not traditional foliage. I'm gonna do some Dusty Miller, okay? So, removing the lower leaves so that I got just the upper and repeating that. Actually, this one I can break in half and use both. Okay. You know, again, I started with this and I know some of you pop in late because life gets in the way. Uh, I just want to say thank you to all you tulips that participated in sharing the love for Carolyn. Um, I was able to share your messages. I was reading them to the family, reading them to Carolyn, um, talking to her and just letting her know how much she was loved. And it was very comforting to have that love. And then as the car 
cards have been coming in, the family has just been so grateful. Uh, they didn't realize what impact she had had on people's lives and how much she had touched you in guiding you towards your career and helping you with your studies so that you knew how to create correctly and also push the envelope not to go status quo. So thank you for those of you that did that. And then we as the TULIP team, the teachers, that love has kept us going. Um, because last week we had a class that graduated. And it had to be special for them. You know, we didn't want to have them have a, a not special experience. And so we were able to keep ourselves together because we had that love from you all, that support that just kept us motivated, kept us going. So again, thank you for the cards, thank you for the messages, thank you so much for caring. Um, it, it has allowed us to go on and it also tells me how important Carolyn was, which that makes me very happy because definitely a special, special woman. And it was funny because she was so true to her style and it was the best full look, and it was weddings. That was what she did well. Oh my gosh, she was the queen in the wedding world. And uh, so when I was talking to Floor Abundance and discussing what we needed, they're like, ah, we gotcha. Don't worry about it. Not a problem. We gotcha. We know. We know Carolyn. Like, you don't know Carolyn like I know Carolyn. Um, but you know what? I opened that box because I did not give them any specifics. Um, because I, I know for a fact if you trust your wholesaler or your farmer, you get better things. Because they know what's beautiful at the moment, and they know what you need. They can do a better job picking than you can, because you're blindly trying to figure it out. You don't know what's in that cooler, you know, thousands of miles away. So, yeah. You think you like that? I like the Eugenie and the toffee better than the Westminster and the toffee, I right? definitely. And then I, I, Carolyn would insist that I add, <laughs> I must add, oh my gosh. And, you know me, I can bind wire and raffia. Carolyn did tape. So I'm using tape. My first time ever on camera to use tape. Okay, if I screw up, it's Carolyn's fault. <laughs> that color combination is so delicious. I want to eat it. And I'm trying to think what food I would connect it to, but it's just, on camera, it is so soft and sophisticated looking. Oh. You know, I would say, and this will be a personal connection, my mother-in-law, and father-in-law always made this candy called Carmelo's. It was marshmallows dipped in caramel. Oh my gosh, it was absolutely sinfully, fabulously good. This is a Carmelo bouquet because it gives you that caramel and ivory of the marshmallows. So I'll call this the Carmelo. But oh my gosh, every Christmas they'd send me a box of stuff and of course, you have to eat it. It would be not nice not to eat it. So. Okay, you know, taping a bouquet is harder than it looks. I'm not sorry. <laughs> Carolyn, I don't know about this. I might have to go back to my wire, but I know a really good flower school you could attend. <laughs> <laughs> Which one teacher doesn't teach the taping? <laughs> but the other one that could is out there right now. So, so we're good. I know, Jerry always tapes hers as well, and so so we can still teach you that. You can you can come and we'll teach you how to tape a bouquet. And I'll practice. I gotta practice because you know what? It does make a little different look and is appropriate. And it's not wrong, it's different. You've heard me say that so many times. It's not wrong, it's different. Um, okay, so I cut these apart now. some down a little lower and then bring some up higher higher than I ever dreamed more than I like we have a lot of 
ice cream references going on right now. Uh, Gra- where did Grace's go? I've lost hers. She said something about um, raspberry sherbet, and Scott thinks it reminds him of Neapolitan ice cream. Oh my gosh, I haven't thought about Neapolitan in a long time. Did you get it in a box when you were little? We and did. And you cut it. I, yes. A slice of ice cream. Did you ever have a slice of ice cream? No. no. Ricky's looking at me like, I, crazy old lady, shut up over yeah. there. Yeah, but you could get a slice because that was the only way you could get, get it out of the, the box. Cover. Exactly. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, it's nerd girls here. Nerd girls. No. We had box stick by my age. <laughs> no. Oh! Oh! oh. Alright, Junior. <laughs> Because you get to choose. 
which one matches your style, matches your earth conscious feelings, um, your vibe, so to speak. And there's not a right or wrong, but there are different mechanics, and you need to know all of them so that you can make an educated decision as to which works best for you. Uh, so I want to come back and do one in the netting. We're even showing them how to use a Kenzon now. I know, we've got Kenzon, we've got alternative foams, we've got foam free, we've got the netting, um, so many different mechanics because you do have choices now. I mean, the whole world of floral has evolved so much and there's so many different options and we're trying to make sure that we are cutting edge, cutting edge, all, 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 um, so that you truly get a good foundation so that when you go out to do your business, you do what you do best. Cover my tape. I don't want the tape to show. Making sure it's down into the water well. Picking up the piece I threw on the floor. <coughs> if you did, I mentioned the toolkit um, live with Teacher Jerry last week, um, and then I showed you the branded shirt. Uh, that Carolyn and Jerry wear when they deliver. If you missed that, you can go back to the YouTube playlist that has all the lives on there. And it's in there twice, because you'll see it as a live stream. And then you'll also see it as a live with Teacher Jerry, because each of the teachers have their own playlist. Right now, if you go to the playlist, We've got um, Teacher Carolyn right at the very tip top. So if you want to go back and review some of the things she's done, definitely do so. And then don't check out early today. Hang around a bit because last on our hour, we've got a video that Caledonia and Ricky put together that celebrates Teacher Carolyn. So you don't want to miss that. That's going to be the last of our hour today. Okay, so going oval on this one and filling it in a bit, then coming back. They sent hellebores. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous hellebores. And that's a flower that's really on trend for the springtime. It's one of the first early spring bloomers and it's just spectacular. It holds surprisingly well if it is harvested at the correct time and this is correctly harvested and then shipped to us from Floor Abundance because they knew that it would be fabulous. Um, if you have a farm that doesn't know the proper harvesting it could become a problem, but this is great. You want to get it when it has started to actually start to go to seed, which there is a, a Karen Handling video on hellebores in the playlist as well. It's another one of our Tulip Tuesdays, so you can look for it um, and get tips on how to keep it fabulous. Then sweet peas. Those are great. Oh, those stems. I know, they're so strong and sturdy and full and lush and all of those positive words. You know, shout out, um, we had a graduate, Wendy, who helped me out this week as everything was going kind of crazy, I guess, for a good, better, lack of a better word. And so she was in yesterday and processed all the flowers, got everything totally ready and beautiful and set out set up the studio for me so that all I had to do was show up and make pretty. So Wendy, thank you. This would have been a very difficult day, but it was a very easy day because you had everything ready and that way I was able to spend the afternoon with the students 
and do other things, take care of other students and such, so that all I had to do was come in and play with beautiful flowers. I mean, look at this, oh my gosh. So look at that, boy, Leanne, can't you get it in the right hole? It was in and then coming back out. Oh, why didn't somebody tell me I didn't have it inserted correctly? Oh, <laughs> tulips, you gotta take care of me, I need ya. And then, oh, yeah. Beautiful soft pink on the roses. Very delicate. Bring it into the center. Be sure to give it a little more. And tucking it low. Then carrying it through to the back side. Is that a new container? No, Carolyn has used this container before, and um, I believe it is one of the accent decor com codes. Yeah, it's not a new one. I don't, I don't, yeah, I'm pretty sure that, because I was trying to pick things that I thought I had seen Carolyn use before, so if I picked wrong, well then, sorry, but I was thinking it was one that she had used, so. There was a method to my madness today. <laughs> it may not always be apparent, but you know what? I'm just doing the best I can. So. <clears throat> so YouTube's having a discussion about knives, and if anybody had a recommendation for knives or ones that they favored, either for comfort or uh, the blade maintaining an edge, I wondered if you had a preference beyond your custom-made one. Yeah. That's a good um, question because those of you that have class with us know that we focus on the knife for ergonomic reasons to take care of your body. That's the only reason. It's not for the flowers, it's for you. So we do definitely focus on it. Mine is a uh, custom made. What kind of a knife you use really depends on your hand and then also the quality of the blade. So if you have a favorite kitchen paring knife, that's fine. If you have a favorite hunting knife, that's fine. If you have a favorite whatever, floral knives, um, Claws has one, Victorina, Victorinox has one, Oasis has one. There are lots of different brands and I don't have a strong preference for any one of them. If one of you out there, if the tulip has a strong preference one way or another, let us know because I'd be curious myself. I'm adding in a little bit of the Andromeda. Some people call it Lily of the Valley Bush, Piaris, so you may have heard it called different things. Kind of depends on which part of the country you are and then whether you're a florist or a gardener or both because the terminology gets adjusted. Uh, but I, lo I love this sort of deep burgundy pink color. It also comes in a white uh, ivory, so uh, it does come in different colors. I grew up calling it Andromeda. Andromeda is what yeah. I grew up with it. And then as a florist, I've started calling it Piaris because mm -hmm. that's what a lot of wholesalers sell it as. Um, and the lily of the valley bush I heard too, that Andromeda was what, in my horticulture class, that's what we were taught. Um, and so, I don't know. So you can see just tucking in, letting it feed through. I'm finding that weddings as a whole, people are looking for more variety and more unique. So when you can do sweet peas and calibre and rose and Andromeda, all of a sudden it feels special. This form is very popular and gives it a bit more contemporary look, although it's actually a very old, 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 old form. And so we're just talking the crescent here, been around for a hundred zillion years, but it's now back on trend, which is always fun to see how things go around, cycle through, come around, back around, 
So who knows what's going to be next? This is kind of hot at the moment, but it's not going to be hot forever. It will change. <clears throat> That's, that one particularly, to me, looks very constant spry. True. And that is what we're seeing a lot of right now, is the influence of constant spry in design. Um, And the new generation, or newer florists, I shouldn't say generation, newer florists were never exposed to constant spry necessarily, um, because that was back in the 40s, 50s, you know, a long time ago. And so 40s, 50s, 60s, probably in that era. So they, the people that didn't grow up knowing of that, think they've discovered something brand new, and yet it is a rediscovery of what was. If you get the chance, go to your favorite bookstore, go online, go to the library, and look up anything by Constance Spry. And she was a prolific writer, so there's many books. Uh, and go through, you'll find that many of the things that she was showing are what's popular now. And many of the mechanics that he, she worked with are being rediscovered now, which is pretty exciting. I have always idolized her. I thought she was, you know, like one of the first feminists ever. She really was a strong, strong woman that went into the career mode. And being a florist was not a craft or a hobby. It was a profession. And she kept it at a professional level and then documented how to do things correctly. She was one of the first women that ever did that. So I find it to be truly fascinating um, to see that finally she's being rediscovered. And so let's give her credit, her credit is due. These mini carnations are the most wonderful. Let's see if we can get that on there. Can Leanne hold it in the right spot? There we go. Um, they've got that lovely little starburst almost. I grew up hearing them as being pinks. I don't know that they're still called pinks, but that's what I grew up with, was they were pinks that you would actually grow in your garden. But it's in that Dianthus family, so it's a, in the miniature carnation family. Okay, guys, I've got like one minute, two minutes. What do you need to know? What did I not cover? Again, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the love this last week. It has meant so much to all of us and has kept us going, so thank you for that. Um, for those of you that didn't know, we did have a death in our Tulip family, and it has, it has been a difficult time, as we're all grappling with that because it was not expected, um, and it was very, very sudden, and we've all been touched deeply by it. And what has helped immensely is the Tulip Bunch embracing and supporting. So thank you for that. Susie, Caledonia, <laughs> thank goodness you guys are online with us because you keep everything going and we couldn't do it without you. I do want to say a very, very, very special thank you to Ricky in Caledonia. They did the hardest job of all, in my opinion. They went through past footage of Carolyn, which you can imagine how emotional that was. Um, yeah, it was very emotional. And they put this together so that we could share it with you today as we end our live stream. And so it's a wonderful way to go back, celebrate the woman we all knew and loved. But before I say goodbye, couple of things. One, look at pro photos of the arrangements. I'll doctor them up a little bit because I was designing with my eyes half closed so I didn't cry. And so we'll make them perfect to get professional photos. They'll be in the Tulip Bunch tomorrow. Then um, thank you. Thank you to you. And I say to end this hour, it's all about Carolyn. But I want to tell you Get out there and do something you love each and every day. If you're not ready to get emotional, this is your time to turn us off because now comes the video and I'm going to step aside as well and I'll see you all next week. Bye for now.
and get out there and do something you love. Bye-bye.